I have been to some very hot places. And ironically, I don't know why this happens, I always go in the summer to the very hottest places on the planet. I, I don't know how that happens. Uh, but like, for example, went to Burkina Faso in West Africa in July. And one thing you learn very quickly in that environment is that you need something between you and the direct rays of the sun. Without shade, your skin would just burn or you'd just be fried, at least, if, at least uh, my, my skin type. So in those very hot places, everyone congregates in the shade. So the tree that you're, you're, you know, that's providing the shade, it becomes your shield from the sun. And today I'm going to be talking to you about shields. So would you turn your Bible to Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 17. We're in this series called Well Suited for Victory, talking about the armor of God. And I, I want you to know that you are in a war. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, if you have given him your life, you are in a war. It wasn't a, uh, you know, like an optional sign up. Because the enemy has, is coming against you. And that is why we're in a war. Because the, the enemy of Jesus is now our enemy as well. And the enemies, the devil's troops are organized and layered. They have structure. And that's what we've been learning about in Ephesians chapter 6. They're, they are strategizing against you and me as, as followers of Jesus. They are strategizing against us every single minute. And they are watching for times when you're vulnerable and open to attack. So God says to be strong in the Lord. Not just be strong like work up your own strength, but be strong in the Lord. And God says to you, put on all of God's armor, the armor that Jesus first wore and perfected for you. And then he said, stand firm, stand your ground. And after the battle, you will still be standing. And that is good news for somebody today because some of you are very, very aware you are in a battle right now. Others may not be as aware, but many of you are aware. And I want you to know, after the battle, you will be standing strong. You will get through this. God is by your side, and he's given you the strategy to be able to get through it. So, so far in this series, we talked about the belt of truth. We talked about the body armor of God's righteousness. We talked about shoes of peace. And today we're going to talk about Satan's offense and your defense. All right? So it's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. In addition to all these, it's all these things I've been talking about, hold up the shield of faith to stop or extinguish the fiery arrows of the devil. So today I obviously want to talk to you about a shield, but this shield is cooler than Captain America's shield. <laughs> It is the shield of faith, the shield of faith. So this word that Paul uses for shield here, it, it referred to a Roman soldier's concave door-shaped shield. Uh, it was big enough that a soldier could actually get behind it for full body coverage and protection against frontal attack. A row of soldiers could stand shield to shield and make a wall of protection that not only protected them, but would protect the people directly behind them as well. These shields were made of wood, and they were overlaid with leather and uh, linen. It's kind of interesting the, the, the layers uh, that they put on it. But this, the layers of leather, uh, when they were heading into battle, they could soak that leather and get it wet so that if fiery arrows came at them, that they would be extinguished by the shield. So we kind of tend to think, you know, of a metallic shield deflecting things. Well, with, with, layer, with leather on the front, that, that, those arrows might actually stick to the shield, but they would be put out by the wet leather. Very cool. The devil's attacks are like flaming arrows. They're sort of small, not always a big deal, but sometimes a barrage of small deals. 
like flaming arrows, they could be coming at you from many directions at one time. Does this sound familiar to anybody? (laughs) The devil shoots lies at you. That's one of the kinds of arrows he shoots. Lies like you're not good enough. No one could love you. That is a lie. And we know that the father of lies is the devil. If the devil's flaming arrows get through your defenses, they can stick to you. And they can shake your faith in who you are and who God says you are and your identity in Christ and in who God is. That can be shaken if those things get through, if his attacks get through. Another kind of arrow that the, the, the flaming arrow that the devil likes to shoot at us are temptations that are hand chosen to be attractive to you individually. Not everybody is troubled by the same type of temptation. And so the devil's watching. He's watching what's going on in your life. What, uh, he's not reading your mind. He's not, you know, he's not inside you. He is, he is looking at your life and he's going, what are they, what are they vulnerable to? What's, what seemed to trip them up before? Maybe it will trip them up again. Like for example, if you're struggling financially, he might just suddenly provide you the most interesting opportunity that no one could ever find out to steal or to cheat your employer or the government or, or, or how, however that is in, in a store. But the devil, that is a flaming arrow from the devil sent to try to trip you up and get through your defenses. Are you feeling lonely or frustrated? Then he might bring a sexual temptation, a temptation to sexual sin uh, to you. Are you feeling stressed or depressed? Boy, those substances might really help whatever substance would be a temptation to you. Do you see what I mean? The devil is looking. He's not stupid. Yep. There are layers, as it's talked about in, in, in Ephesians 6.10. And so he is watching, and he, is, he wants to take you down. Psalm 7.10 says, God is my shield. Yeah. And that makes this piece of the armor just a little bit different than the other ones. God is your shield. Wow. Yeah. Man, that's so powerful. In Genesis 15, God says to Abraham, I am your shield. And that shield means your protection, your covering. God says, I am that for you. So you might feel like there are flaming arrows buzzing all around you, trying to stick and take you down, but God is your shield. So if God is your shield, why does Paul, this early church leader who was writing down the book of Ephesians that we've been reading through, if if God's your shield, why did Paul say to hold up the shield of faith? Well, faith is how we run to God for protection, security, and comfort. The shield of faith that he's talking about, it's not faith like positive, thinking positive thoughts. You know, I, I, I see this on, um, on the news all the time, social media, different things. People say, send me your happy thoughts. Well, that's not going to do anything. That's not the kind of faith we're talking about. When the devil is shooting at you, happy thoughts, not enough. Believing for the best, not enough. The powers, not just in the faith. It is in the object of your faith. Who is God? (laughs) Yes. That's where the power of our faith comes. It's It's not because our faith, we've worked up enough faith. That's not the issue. It's because we have even a tiny mustard seed of faith in the, in the almighty God. That's what makes the difference. And that's what becomes your shield. So imagine that you fell into the Puget Sound you don't know how to swim, and you're drowning. Someone that you can't see throws you a rope. Well, if you grab the rope, you might be pulled to safety. But first, you would need to believe that the rope exists, that you're not just seeing things, and you need to believe someone's at the other end of the rope that could pull you in, or else you're not probably not going to even exercise any faith to grab the rope. And if you think that the person on the other end of the rope, because you can't see him, right, in this illustration, if you think the person on the other end of the rope isn't strong enough to pull you in, then you won't even bother grabbing the rope. 
So it's not enough to believe in the rope and that there's someone strong enough on the other end of it. You must believe that the person on the other end of the rope is for you. So imagine if, if, let's change the metaphor just a little bit, if you were a sailor in wartime and you fell into the water, there's a rope that comes, you can't see who threw it in. What if it's the enemy? Then that's a whole different scenario. But if you know that it's someone who's for you, if it's a friend or someone that's for you, you will grab that rope immediately and say, pull me in right now. That's what faith is like. So many times it seems like a storm is raging in your life, but your shield of faith isn't working. Still seeing those flaming arrows. It still looks bad out there. You believe that God has got you, but then you get laid off your job. You're certain God can heal you, but your health is still deteriorating instead of improving. You've prayed for your kids to get, come back to God, but it, it seems like they've just gotten further from God. If your faith is only focused on outcomes, your faith will be shaken. We need to keep our faith on God. Then how, whatever the outcome that he chooses that's for our best, we can still have faith and we can still trust him and that faith can still be our shield. In Mark chapter 9, Starting at verse 17, there's a very interesting story. And uh, Jesus comes up to this crowd. And one of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, talking to Jesus, I brought my son so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever this spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Listen to what Jesus says. He said to them, you faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So the dad's faith is in the disciples. The disciples' faith is in their ability to cast out an evil spirit. So there's lots of faith going on, and yet Jesus still says faithlessness, the lack of faith, is the issue here. But wait a minute, everybody has lots of, all these people in the story, they all have tons of faith. But something's missing. Let's go down to verse 20, Mark 9, 20. So they brought the boy. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. Now think, what would happen if this happened to you? If someone was bringing a demon-possessed person to you and you're, you're like getting your faith up, you're getting your, you know, your strength up, you're getting your passion up and everything, you're ready to tackle this, and that person, uh, when they get close to you, you're expecting complete victory, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be so easy, so quick, so powerful, and the opposite happens. And the Spirit grabs this boy and throws him on the ground, and it's violent and it's horrible. The, the situation got worse when they brought the boy to Jesus. And the dad says to Jesus, have mercy on us and help us if you can. And look at Jesus' response to him. What do you mean, if I can? Yeah. Do you see the issue? Do you see the, the lack of faith? What do you mean, if I can, Jesus asked. Anything is possible, if a person believes. The father instantly cried out, the father of this boy, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. It's one of the most famous prayers in the Bible. This dad expressed what we all feel sometimes. Delays create doubts. 
Delays create doubts. It's human. It just happens. And the enemy seizes on the opportunity. Then this dad of this kid prays a great prayer. I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. He, he's, this is finally honest. I, I do have faith, and I do have some unfaith. <laughs> yes, both are happening, swirling like a tornado of belief and unbelief inside me at the same time. But the victories in Jesus, not your faith. The victories in who your faith is in. Amen. It's not in your faith. Because the enemy is just going to, he's going to hammer you and tell you, you don't have enough faith, you're not holy, you're not this, you're not that, you didn't use the right form. He's going to hammer you, but that's not the issue. The issue is if your faith is in Jesus, you will be victorious, period. Amen. Period. That is God's word. Jesus commanded the evil spirit to leave the boy, and it did. Bam, right then, in Jesus' timing. The uh, disciple, or the guy brought the kid to the disciples, so they're bringing him to Jesus in a sense, bringing him to the disciples. The prayer number one didn't, didn't happen yet, you know? He bring, then he brings him to Jesus directly. Convulsion, it's bad, it's worse. They have this little discussion, still hasn't happened. So right on time in Jesus' time, <laughs> That boy was released. Yeah. I've been reading an author uh, in this series, an author that, that wrote about the armor of God, Dugwood, and he said, faith protects us from Satan's attacks because of what faith enables us to take hold of, namely the power and protection of God himself. That's the power of faith because when your faith is in almighty God, you are going to be victorious. How does Jesus' shield of faith stop the fiery darts of the devil? Well, when the devil tempts you to sin, and he says something like this, you might as well give in. I'm stronger than you. This temptation is stronger than you. You can't help it. The shield of faith puts out that fire because your faith rests in Jesus' promises. Even when you walk through the darkest valley, the lowest place, the most discouraging place in your life, the Lord, your shepherd, will be close beside you. He does not always make the valley go away, but he does promise to be with you in the valley. His rod and staff protect and comfort you. Your heavenly father is forcing, causing everything that happens in your life, the good, the bad, and the ugly, to collaborate, to work together for your benefit and for your good. That is the promise of God. Amen. So even when you don't see the answer yet, you still trust that God is using this season, using these issues, using these situations for your good. And then 1 John 4, 4, it says, the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. That is God's word. You may not be able to take on the devil yourself, but God can. Amen. God can. He is enough. When the devil lies to you, God must not love you or you wouldn't be going through this difficulty. It's, you, it's because you're unholy. It's because you're not good enough. It's the shield of faith that puts out the fire. Your faith rests in Jesus' love. So we know God's word says, even if all the powers of hell come against you, even if 2020 comes against you, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Amen. That is the truth. That is God's word. Flaming arrow extinguished. God may allow temptations and trials to come into your life to reveal areas where you need to grow and you need to depend on God. We see this in Jesus' own 12 disciples with Peter, Simon Peter. In Luke 22, Jesus is, uh, it's recorded that Jesus spoke to Simon, 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 Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat, but I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. 
So when you have repented and turned to, get to me again, strengthen your brothers. I love this, this prayer of Jesus over his disciple. Jesus knew that Peter was going to deny him three times. I mean, it was bad. It was really bad. But Jesus had the faith that Peter would overcome those doubts, over, that he would be able to extinguish those, those flame arrows. And he even said, I know you're going to be going through this and you're going to be tested. And I've prayed that you're going to stand strong, but I know you're going to be victorious ultimately. That's what Jesus says over you and me today. Amen. So good. So when you're struggling with doubts, you can pray, I do believe, but Lord, help me overcome my unbelief. And Jesus loves that prayer. Right after that prayer, Jesus delivered the son. Jesus loves that prayer. I encourage you to pray it. The bottom line of this message is this. Your faith is strong when Jesus is your shield. Your faith is strong when Jesus is your shield. So I have had times, uh, some very challenging times in, in, in recent years. And uh, I've told you about this before, where I've just been marching around my office praying, praying and praying and praying. And one of the things that I will do is pray through the armor of God. And I love it when it comes to the shield of faith. And I just bring to the Lord everything that's coming. You hear the lies, you see the attacks, you, you, uh, you see the temptations, and Jesus, right now, I am just putting that, that shield of faith between me and it. So I know flaming arrows are coming at me from all different directions, but I'm holding up the shield, and I'm quoting your word, Lord, and I'm standing on your promises. I am resting in your love, and th- those things cannot get through. The, in Jesus' name, those arrows are extinguished. In Jesus' name, I take authority, and I hold up the shield of faith, and God is my shield. Jesus is my shield, and he is your shield. You don't need to have the right amount of faith. Some of you have been praying for something. You didn't see it immediately, and so the enemy is using, he's studying that. He's listening to how you're praying. He's he's watching the situation. He knows you're praying for this. He knows it hasn't happened yet. He's watching, and so he's going to come to you and say, it's your fault. You're bad. You're not holy enough. You're not in the word. You're not using the right formulas. You don't have enough faith. But Jesus said, all you need is this much. So the enemy is coming at you and saying, it's you. You're the problem. You're not the problem. The broken world system is the problem. That's the problem. We sinned. We're paying the consequences for it. But there is coming a day when Jesus says, behold, I make all things new. And he is restoring it to how it was supposed to be. The only reason he is delaying is because he wants everyone saved. He wants everyone on the planet. What is it? Seven billion people. He wants them all saved saved. He wants them all to put their faith in Jesus, and he is delaying mercifully. But there is coming a day where a line is drawn. There is coming a day when every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. That day is coming. I I don't know about you. I want to be the ones my knees already bent before he says, boo! My knees already going to be bent. Amen? I don't want to be one of the ones that's like, no! And he makes me bow. I want to be in the camp that right now is already bowing. (laughs) My heart is bowing before the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my shield. You just need to put all the faith you have on one object, Jesus. You don't have to drum up the right amount of faith. You need to exercise faith. That is a biblical principle. Exercise the faith you have. This much, little teeny bit, mustard seed of faith, the tiniest bit. And if there's a time where you feel like I got zero, then you go grab me or grab one of us, grab a brother or sister in Christ, in the body of Christ, and say, I need your faith right now because there is a mustard seed of faith for you somewhere. Amen? Let's get it. Let's get it and hold up that shield of faith and extinguish the enemy's arrows. When you stand and fight in the armor of God, 
you are well suited for victory. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And I'm repeating that every Sunday because it's just such an important thing. When you stand and fight in the armor of God, you're well suited for yeah. victory. Would you stand to your feet right now if you're in the room? And online, I encourage you to change your position. Either stand or lean forward if you're sitting on the couch or whatever. And, and let's lean into this and let's pray today. The shield of faith has three parts. Faith has three parts. Faith is belief, trust, and commitment to obey. Belief, trust, and commitment to obey. All the demons believe, but they're not saved. <laughs> Okay, so a lot of people believe there's a God out there somewhere, but belief in Jesus, trust in Jesus, commitment to obey Jesus, that's what faith looks like, all right? So would you bow your heads with me right now as we get ready to pray? And I just want to ask you, is any part of the shield of faith missing for you? Do you not believe right now? Do you not trust when you evaluate your life, are you really not committed to obey Jesus? Because those three go together as faith. That's, how, that's what our faith looks like. If any part of the shield of faith is missing for you, would you just raise your hand? I just want to pray for you. And I want to just thank you for being honest. I'm, I'm speaking to many believers here in the room and online, and hands are up. Because we know, yeah, this, I, I got, I, I'm doing some of that, but I'm not really trusting or I'm not really obeying. I'm asking him to, to solve this problem, but I'm not obeying his principles. That, all of that goes together for faith. I just want to pray for you right now. Lord, you see our hands. And Lord, I love that our hands are raised and mine's up too. Because we are praying a prayer to you right now, Lord, like that little, like the dad in the story. We're saying, Lord, we do believe. Absolutely, yes. Would you also help us overcome our unbelief? Yes. Lord, I pray that you would help us to believe that you are able and that you are good. You're at the other end of the rope. You are for us and you are strong enough. We believe. Yes. Lord, help us to believe. Lord, help us also to trust you. Lord, you've given us some principles in your word that sometimes are hard to follow. Lord God, I pray you'd help us to trust you. Lord, I pray you'd help us to trust your timing. Lord, because sometimes you have a different timing than we do for your own good purposes. And your purposes for us are always good. And Lord, would you help us to be committed to obey you? Lord, I sense that what's going to happen is that for some of us right now, we are, we are committing afresh to obey you as part of our faith, our expression of faith. And as we commit to obey you, the enemy goes, good, I'm going to challenge that. So Lord, I pray that you would strengthen us. Yeah. Like you prayed, Jesus, I pray that our faith would not fail and that after we get through the trial, we'll still be serving you. We'll still be strong. We'll still be trusting you and believing you and following you. So help us, Lord God. Increase our faith. Increase our faith. I thank you, Jesus, that you are our, you are our shield. You are our shield, and we are accessing you, our shield, right now by faith. By faith. In Jesus' name, amen. And I want to give you one other invitation, whether you're in the room or online, and I just don't assume anything. I don't care if I've seen you hundreds of times or if I've, it's my first time to see you. I want to give you an invitation to put your faith in Jesus because here's why, guys. I want to give you an invitation to bow your heart to the Lordship of Christ now while you still have a choice. Every knee will bow. Let's bow now. Let's bow now. So we spend eternity with Jesus forever in heaven. Amen? Amen. So online or in the room, I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. That's, that's the thing. Put your faith in Him. Believe, trust, and commit to obey Him. Turn from your sin, turn your life over to Jesus, and let him lead. Let him lead. If you want to do that today, uh, maybe you've been here a long time and you're like, oh, I, I just thought I was a Christian because I came here a lot. You're, you're not a Christian until you put your faith in Jesus. That's what makes you a Christian. Let's do it. Let's do it right now. 
all right? So in the room or online, would you just bow your heads? Would you just lift your hand up right now boldly to say, Pastor, pray for me. I am putting my faith in Jesus right now. I just want to make sure that, that I'm a Christian and that my knee is bowed now. Uh, that is so awesome. And I, I see you here and I see you, on, I, I believe, online that there are some people raising your hands there as well. Would you just follow me in a prayer? So I'll lead, you follow. Let's go. Let's pray it to Jesus together. Jesus, Jesus. I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to bow my knee to you today. Lead me. Save me. Forgive me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you did that, we just applaud you today. That's awesome. That is awesome. That is the best decision you could have made. Would you just let me know you made the decision? Even if you've been a part of our congregation for a long time or if you're brand new, would you head to the website, fill out a connect card again, and there's a little box to check that says, I made that decision to put my faith in Jesus today. Let me know. I want to know, and I want to cheer you on. God bless you. Amen. Wow, I hope you are encouraged today. I know my faith is built up, and I know that God is walking with us. Amen? Amen. Well, I want to remind you of a few things. Um, those of you in the room, if you would like to buy a gift for a child in need, go check out the tree, and there's instructions there of how to uh, proceed with that. And if you're online, can you, line, you can just sign up, and we will take it from there. Um, we have Kids Church online for those that are still at home. Uh, so please, please do take advantage of that. And if you are watching from uh, online, then would you subscribe to our uh, channel? And that just helps more people know about who we are. Okay, people, let's be strong in the Lord this week. Let's trust him. We'll keep our focus and our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Go victorious. Have a great week. We'll see you next week.